Welcome to the Weekly Show. I'm your host, Pat O'Melia, and as always, the Weekly Show is a window into your own community. We kind of got a theme show tonight. Uh, as you can see, I would assume you can see by now, my guest is Curtis Sleeworth, the founder of the Guardian Angels. And it's no surprise there's a crime problem here in Jersey City, but things are getting better. As I'll show you here, you know, the Jersey City Police, big drug bust recently. I'll use camera two since my director isn't paying attention to me. Big drug, big drug bust. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Don't worry about it. Big drug bust. Hero Jersey City cop jumped off the Lincoln Bridge to save an individual. The same, very same bridge where our two tragic officers lost their lives on Christmas Day. And Jersey City now has its own tip line. If you're one of the bad guys, you know, if you know one of the bad guys, you can call Jersey City Tips 547 Jail, and Chief Troy will be more than happy to investigate those calls. Everything is confidential. And, of course, like the show that I'm producing for the Hudson County Prosecutor's Office, uh, Hudson County Lodge, same deal. Call the number. It's all confidential. But let's go to our guest here, Curtis Lee. Or Curtis, thank you for coming on the show. My pleasure, and I Pat. commend you for doing this because in both of your press conferences here in Jersey City, yes. I was probably the biggest critic there. Mm. And um, got to commend you for coming in the hot seat here. But before we get into the Guardian Angels, let's get a little background. Yes. You're from Brooklyn? Born and raised uh, in Canarsie, Brooklyn. That's a blue-collar working-class section where my parents are still there, and they have no intention on fleeing Brooklyn. It's like here in Jersey City. <laughs> exactly. you know, my uh, wife's family is all Italian. They're not leaving until we don't have a Campbell funeral home, but until uh, better just since the field takes us away, well, we're staying in Jersey City. As my uh, dad tells me, he says, hey, tough guy. Uh, the Santini brothers aren't moving us. Only Campbell's brother's funeral home, and that'll be when we're face up on a gurney. And at Campbell's Brothers Funeral Home, that is the who's who gets dispatched out of there. Now, you grew up in the streets. For that yeah. matter, your nickname, being tough guy, was Rock, wasn't it? That's right. Uh, this is when I, I did went. some research here, as you could tell. Very good. I can see you thorough. <laughs> uh, but uh, I went to Brooklyn Prep at Jesuit High School, where the uh, Jesuits shined their boots on my backside in my senior year and gave me the boot. But I used to... Uh, be up like 24-7, 365, delivered the papers, after school activities. It was a heavy academic curriculum. You had to learn Latin and Greek. I mean, I have trouble with English, and then they wanted to give me Latin and Greek. So uh, it was rough stuff, but I was able to get through it. And uh, sometimes when I'd have to defend some of the um, feckless, weak uh, fellow students of mine, I'd hit a guy so hard his mother would feel the vibrations. And that's where I got the nickname, The Rock. Rock. Now, as a kid, you worked at McDonald's? I did Mickey D's. Uh, actually, I escaped Brooklyn, and I went to an even worse borough, the Bronx. The Bronx, yes. It's... And on that number four train, the Muggers Express got off, uh, sat for an interview. They said, we need night managers for McDonald's. I said, why? Because, well, the last one on East Fordham Road in Webster was roughed up, and the security guard was killed. And we're looking for somebody to immediately oh. learn the trade. There's, there's, a, there's a place I want to work. Right. And most everyone else would say, no, nah, I'll go to suburbia, Little House on the Prairie. We have, op I, we have openings here because of murders. <laughs> exactly. And remember, this is the late 70s. Uh, that's when the city was really sliding into the abyss. There was all kinds of crime. But I was up for it, and uh, a guy named Don Chin taught me the trade. This uh, huge guy. Uh, who had basically uh, learned to, to navigate the streets, but also manage a restaurant. And I did everything the McDonald's trained you not to do. Uh, they never sent me to Hamburger University because I would have failed miserably, but I learned the art of survival in that store. And from there, developed the concept of the Guardian Angels. Now, you, you started out as an assistant manager? Assistant you manager. You didn't start out as fry guy? No, no, you but you had to do all that. Uh, oh, you, you know, you had to multitask. Before you could ever even get into the management level, you had to make the burgers, you had to make the macs, you had to make the fries, you had to clean the fryers out, you had to do maintenance. You had to do everything under the sun. And then finally, you became an assistant manager and then a night manager, which meant you were the person standing behind the counter that every cretin, every enemy of society, every dope fiend was coming in to rob at 1, 2 in the morning. Do you have the bulletproof glass there? I don't even think they had bulletproof glass. Oh, no, no, that's the liquor store. That's the all-night bulletproof glass with the guard who looked like he had steroids for breakfast. Then there's Ronald McDonald Land. No bulletproof glass. Basically, an invitation to come on in the back with your sawed-off shotgun, put it to the manager's head, and as he trembles with the shotgun and he says, you better hit those tumblers, Jack, or you're going to meet your maker, and you're having an X-lax attack, you're saying, 
Oh, please, don't fail me now. How long did you work for McDonald's? I worked from 1976 to 1979, the end of 1979, when they fired me for basically forming the Guardian Angels. Now, you should be able to answer the next question. What are the ingredients in the Big Mac? Uh, now, you remember two all? All beef patties, sesame street bun, special mac sauce, right? And naturally, you had to put lots of lettuce. But what I used to do... That doesn't sound like the old jingle. Hey, look, <laughs> they didn't send me to Hamburger <laughs> University, that's why. But what I used to do was, because late at night, you'd have guys who would go to a theater, not as grand as this on Fordham Road, but the same Lowe's plex, although they divided into three. Well, months. this was divided at one time. The Friends of the Lowe's, this was a three... Uh, screen theater. No, no, they had see, a gut the inside. I can tell you, this. Jersey City. You say Lowe's in Brooklyn. It's Lowe's. You was low. Uh, some of the Jersey City say Lowe's here okay. also. I say Lowe's. Actually, when I was a kid, I said Lowe's. I was retrained as I became a member of the FOL I mean, here. If you want to be this. legit, you have to say Lowe's. So it, it became a triplex, and these guys would go in there late at night because they give you three kung fu flicks for five dollars. So they come out of there all gassed up, all geeked up. Come into the McDonald's. Adrenaline's going. Yeah, Kung but then Fu they'd, start, they'd start smoking marijuana cheaper out there, and they'd get the munchies, and they'd line up for the Big Macs. And believe it or not, they would want to fight over getting extra Mac sauce. And I would tell them, sir, you can't have Mac sauce except on a Big Mac. Here are the ingredients. Well, I would be Burger King anyway to have it your way. <laughs> exactly. Not at McDonald's. Say, no, I want Mac sauce with my fries. And would you believe I had to get into more fights over that than anything else in that restaurant? And that was traditionally what you had to do in running a McDonald's late at night in the Bronx back in the late 70s. By chance, is that McDonald's still there today? Oh, it's still it's there. It's still there? It's still there, but it's a much be in much better condition in a much better neighborhood than it was in the late 70s. Well, you got out of McDonald's. Yeah. You and the fellow Chin uh, basically founded the Guardian Angel. It wasn't originally the Guardian Angels in the beginning. That is correct. Um, the name escapes me right now. Well, actually, before the Magnificent Actually, wasn't 13, the Rock something? Rock the Lord? Rock Brigade. Rock that was Brigade. a cleanup group that I had established first in 1977. We voluntarily went out and swept the streets, planted trees, uh, cleaned the receptacles, boarded up the many abandoned buildings. Everybody loved that because that was antiseptic, all-American. The politicians were falling over one another to give us awards. But I'm taking the train late at night at home to Crooklyn, which used to be Brooklyn. And I'm seeing every enemy of society on that train. And basically, they'd sing songs because I'd be wearing my McDonald's outfit, you know, with the M stamped all over your body yep. with the tie, the brown, with the jacket. Yeah. And I'd sit in the last car because I didn't believe in this. I can't sit in the last car because that's the party car, that's the hoodlum car. I'd have to give up my right to sit in the last car. So people would say, what are you doing back here? You must have all the furniture upstairs and rearranged in the wrong rooms. They're going to rob you. And inevitably, they would come back there, 10, 12 of them. And this is at the time of the late 70s. Remember when they had those name belt buckles, you know, like Charles Cool 70. Breeze, Allah, whatever their name was. And they'd have these turned out hats, and they'd be diddy bopping through the car singing, Manhattan makes it and Brooklyn takes it. And then they'd be looking at you. And I'd tell them, I'm not from Manhattan, I'm from the Bronx. It doesn't matter. You got some ducats, we're taking it. So that people would constantly be robbed on that train. And I said, you know, people could have a clean environment to live in, but if they're walking outside of their house and somebody knocks them upside of their head, they're going to try to move if they can. And if they can't, they're going to put extra bars on the windows, extra locks on the doors, and they're going to be afraid to go out. So that was the problem that I wanted to focus on. And Don Chin helped me in the formation of the Magnificent 13 Subway Safety Patrol. And once we began larger and we wanted to expand our efforts, I changed the name into the Guardian Angels. Because the Guardian Angels, just the name alone, give you a pretty good idea of what we were trying to do. Except too many people in the late 70s thought we were either Charlie's Angels or the Hell's Angels. So we had to do a lot yeah, of education. Yeah, a little, little bit there. of marketing there. Now, would this have anything to do with the Bernie Getz incident, or was it strictly from riding the trains in your own personal? Well, was Bernie Getz was in the mid-80s. And I thought that was later 70s. That was middle no, no, actually, middle 80s. And Bernie Getz uh, was like Casper Milk Toast. You know, he had the big V, the scarlet letter on him. He, I mean, he was a walking, talking victim, the poster child from the Charles Atlas advertisements. You know, yep. the guy who used to get sand kicked in that, his face. Yep. And that was totally different because he's the kind of guy people would pick on and did pick on for an incredible number of years until finally he said enough is enough, and he preemptively striked 
the, the thugs who had surrounded him, and he shot all four of the guys who were going to try to rob him with the sharpened screwdrivers. With us, there were no weapons. We were out there visibly with the red berets and the red sateen jackets. We were trying to deter crime as opposed to just ride around and maybe put put one of our weaker members in the last car and let them be bait and entrap people. That we didn't do. Well, so the Guardian Angels, they were patrolling the trains. Yes. When did you get out of the trains? Oh, it took a long time because uh, at first the police were not at all in favor of what we were doing. Well, the transit police, but actually from a poll that I read, at the time when you founded the Guardian Angels, almost, I believe, 73% of the transit police were in favor of what you were doing on the trains. Right, but 73% meant that there was 27% that weren't. And occasionally you would run into those, what I would call at the time, cowboy cops, who didn't care what the rules and regulations or memorandum of understandings were between the department and the guardian angels, they would in essence come up to me and they'd say, Slee would take the position, which meant hands, hands up, up against the against wall. wall. First me, search me, I said, yo, Sarge, what's the beef? And he'd say, disorderly conduct, disturbing the peace, unlawful assembly, obstruction of government administration, and today for breathing air, you're going in. So you disappear for 72 hours, you wait for a judge to arraign you, and you have to appear over and over again. It was like a, a method of harassing you. But at that time, imagine, you're collared. You're being put into holding cages with other guys who hate your guts. And the correctional officers parading you through and say, hey, fellas, look who we got here. The this head is angel. Superhero. This guy wants to have you all locked up with the key thrown away. And so, CO, put him in my cell, CO. And then it was like, feet don't fail me now. <laughs> Let's break for commercial. You're watching The Weekly Show. My guest is Curtis Lewa. We'll be right back. Right price, right service, right here in Jersey City. Meineke Car Care, 700 Tunley Avenue, Jersey City. 201-659-3551. It's mufflers, brakes, but so much more. It's tune-ups, suspension and alignments. Belts, hoses, batteries, oil changes, tires, and Meineke Car Care in Jersey City is a state licensed emission inspection and repair center. Meineke Car Care, 700 Tunley Avenue, Jersey City, 201 659 3551. Hudson Toyota, Jersey City's number one Toyota dealership for over 25 years. Come test drive the Avalon, the Camry, the Celica, and Motor Trends Truck of the Year, Tacoma. Hudson Toyota, 585 Route 440, Jersey City, 877 Hudson 1. Sales, new and pre-owned, service, parts, and leasing. Hudson Toyota, Jersey City, 877 Hudson 1. Move forward with Toyota. Chevrolet, the DeFeo way. The right car, the right price, and right in your neighborhood. DeFeo Chevrolet, 905 Communipore Avenue, Jersey City. 201-433-9500. All models, new and previously owned, on-site Chevrolet service and parts. DeFeo Chevrolet, 905 Communipore Avenue, also known as Sam C. DeFeo Drive, Jersey City. 201-433-9500. Chevrolet, the DeFeo way. Plaza Auto Body, 700 Tunley Avenue in Jersey City. Your local collision specialist. Body and fender repair, on-site oven-baked paintwork, fiberglass repair experts, custom and classic car restoration. All insurance is welcome. 24-hour towing available. Licensed by the state of New Jersey. Plaza Auto Body, 700 Tunley Avenue, 201-222-3050. Plaza Auto Body, your bumper-to-bumper -bumper buddy. Back. You're watching the weekly show. Curtis Lee is our guest. So you were harassed quite a bit, and you were thrown into hokey for uh, a long weekend. Yeah, again, you can tell this guy's from Jersey City. Hokey. It's Hooskow in the Bronx. Hooskow. Well, we didn't travel over there. <laughs> you know, that's, that's why they have translators. But the kid from Brooklyn, yeah. who is an assistant manager at McDonald's, mm. has done pretty well. Besides the Guardian Angels, you're on a, a top-rated radio show. Oh, yeah. I'm very fortunate. Curtis and Kuby. Uh, on WABC. Been there for 15 years. Worked all kinds of uh, different time segments from overnights to weekends to substitutions. And this is my second time now back at Morning Drive host. Uh, in this case, Ron Kuby is my uh, partner. Now, it's pretty successful, but there's a lot of change in the radio business. Everybody's trying to 
filled the uh, stern void. He went to Sirius, and there's a bunch of listeners out there. Are you trying to attract some of these listeners? I know OR has gone through a lot of changes. Ed Walsh is going to have Donna Hanover now. they got new shows at the uh, afternoon drive. Yeah, I think what's happened is that <coughs> the WABC is pretty much perceived of as uh, at the top of uh, what you would call hot talk radio. Uh, I think uh, some of the competition has decided it can't compete at that level. So WOR is trying to go more for like cultural, social issues, male, female issues. And that's a smart move because they're not going to compete with a Rush Limbaugh or a Sean Hannity or even a Curtis and Kuby in the morning. Or a don't John forget Gambling. the guy I grew up with, Don Imus. Oh, sure, sure. And, uh, well, you got Johnny Gambling on your station. That's right. John Gambling, John Gambling. Uh, came over from WOR and you have Mark Levin and Laura Ingram and... Uh, uh, you just have a powerful lineup. Uh, John Bachelor overnights, and then the uh, Looney Kazunis from Parts Unknown, from Art Bell, you know, talking about uh, chickens walking around with no heads on in the wee hours in the morning. And believe it or not, more people per capita listen to that nonsense than they do to hot political talk. Well, actually, people just get tired of the hot political talk after a while. After a while, you want to hear about headless chickens. Yeah, but late at night, you know, you have your insomaniacs. Uh, so they're up, they're wired to begin with, and they need sort of a friend, a companion. And so when you have these bizarre freakazoids, uh, you know, coming on the radio, these people identify with them and they say, hey, wow, there are people like that out there like me. And it is theater of the mind. Well, That's you, the beauty of radio. When you broke in, you had to do overnight. You, when you break in the radio, you get all the crazy. You're working Thanksgiving Day. You're working Christmas. So you must have did the overnight. Well, see, overnight they must have loved you on overnight. Oh, yeah. Overnights were great because no bosses are around. None of the suits. You know, they're cutting Z's. They're sleeping. They're maxing and relaxing. So you have total wealth. And I, I can remember one time I did a show. I had gotten a tip from uh, Dade County, from the Cuban-American community, through uh, Union County. Uh, and uh, immediately I announced that Fidel Castro was dead. So the network started calling me up. Reuters, UPI, AP, are you sure? How can you be sure? I'm telling you, he's dead. He's room temperature. The bearded one dropped dead. I have it on good authority. They're out in Union City. They're parading out in the street. <laughs> They're passing their black Cuban coffee. They're having a party. This party's down in Havana. I know he got fired for that one. But based on a tip, I basically... Well, it was a good source. It was usually a good source. Yeah, but I forgot they were having parades every other week claiming that Fidel Castro was dead. <laughs> I just happened to hype it up that particular night. And people bought it lock, stock, and barrel, because, let's face it, a lot of people would love to see Fidel Castro at room temperature. Well, remember, there's no such thing as bad press. If people are writing about you, they're talking about you, Yeah, but that's if not good. for the suits there at WABC, I would have had a pink slip, because the bigger suits at the network were definitely not in They were in favor of that, huh? Well, let's get to, you're in Jersey City now. Yeah. You've, you've taken the, did you take the path here today? Oh, of course. You took the path to Journal Square? Do you think I'm going to get into a car at rush hour and, and basically queue up there for an hour and a half at the Holland Tunnel? You've got to be out of your mind. Now, are you in the Guardian garb when you're on the train? Oh, always. Are people coming up to you saying, jeez, what are you doing on the train, Curtis? Well, yeah, people will come up. They'll ask me now, particularly, like, oh, man, you're in that Gotti Jr. trial. You sure you're safe out here? Don't you feel like you're being targeted? I say, that's the way my life is 24-7. Well, they but, already targeted you, didn't they? They yeah. targeted me it's twice. Right. First, they hit me with baseball bats 28 times. I'm obviously showing the damage of that. And then uh, they capped they, me they with uh, hollow point bullets in the back of a cab in June of 1992. You almost died that time. You were oh, yeah. close. I was very close uh, to passing to the hereafter. The guy upstairs obviously didn't want me to punch my card out yet. And I'm going to have the opportunity of testifying against John Gotti Jr. Hopefully this time, they lock him up and throw away the key. Well, let's get to Jersey City. Yes. Why? Who invited you here? Well, downtown Jersey City, there's a delicatessen, Dixie Delicatessen, on Varick and Columbus Way, which actually is owned and managed by a former guardian angel, a gentleman named Mario. His I spoke to him. Right. Mm -hmm. His wife uh, was in the store at the time. People came in, tried to rob the store put her in a really bad uh, position. So they were the initial ones who made the contact. But then almost uh, simultaneously, the wife of the city council president had gotten mugged. And I think a lot of people in that area were concerned because that area is in the midst of a revival, a rejuvenation. It's well, that's a renaissance that's been going on for about 15 years down right. there. Now, when I spoke to Mario at the store at your first press conference, he had told me he was a guardian angel back in the 80s for about three months yes. and said to me, I'm surprised Curtis even remembered me. Mm. So that got me thinking, maybe he wasn't the guy that called you. Mm. 
maybe it was just a good situation to bring you in. No, because... And then you popped up with the former mayor of Jersey City, mm -hmm. Brett Schindler, at your second right. conference. Yeah, but To remember, me, it looks more like Brett Schindler called you than... The Brett Dixon. Schindler wasn't even in town. Brett Schindler actually called me after we had begun the patrols after the announcement and alerted me that he actually lived in that neighborhood just two blocks away. So what can I do to help? I'd like to come out. I'd like to publicly endorse you because I can see the mayor and the police chief haven't necessarily been too negative, but they're not too friendly, and I want to encourage people to get involved. Well, you go back a long way with Brett Schindler. Oh, a very long way. He didn't reach out and embrace you when he was the mayor for nine years. He didn't bring you over. No, and he publicly said, no, that maybe that's something he should have done, but he didn't do it. And remember, well, actually, the Angels were here in the 80s for a short time, weren't they? Uh, short time, but uh, that was at a time when nobody would work with us, neither in New York City, in Jersey City, in Newark. We basically were operating like nomads. Uh, well, you, is there any city that actually embraced you when you when you When we first arrived? started? No. No. The only city to embrace us uh, officially at first was Boston. And actually, at the time, it was through the Transit Authority. The guy in charge of the Transit Authority, Chief Bratton, who eventually became police chief in New York City and is now in charge of Los Angeles. Many feel this is a uh, PR gimmick. You're just taking advantage of a situation, possibly even to boost your radio show. Well, Some people feel this is the first shot across uh, Healy's bow from Brett Schumler. And he's taken advantage of a situation. Well, in Hudson County, everything's always political. Well, we, we always have a conspiracy going on. Right, somewhere. whining, dining, and pocket lining. But at least uh, this is not pocket lining. This is good old-fashioned politics. But to be honest with you, I'm very familiar with the political scene. But this is not involving politics. Healy could have done himself a favor and embraced us instead of taking this uh, medze medze attitude. Uh, the police chief is too busy fighting with one of the local city councilmen. Well, that local city councilman will be here in a little bit. The I know, councilman but from Ward East, Steve talking Fuller. about Chicken Little, the sky is falling. And I'm wondering, I'm scratching my head and saying, wait a second, if we could be working in conjunction with everything else that they're doing in Jersey City, that would just help the overall public safety problem, which has to do with not having enough police officers, which is nobody's fault. Well, that may be a problem we have here in Jersey City. It's always been crime. There was crime when we had a full boat of police officers at 1,200. We're at about 900 right now. Right. Getting back to the Guardian Angels, at both press conferences you had within a week, and one featuring former Mayor Brett Shunla, yeah. there were, weren't very many residents there embracing you. Mm -hmm. There weren't even celebrity gawkers. That surprised me. How did that, how did you feel about that? Didn't it, I mean, we were... There was nobody saying, hey, Curtis... Thank you for being here. Nobody was flipping me the bird. Nobody was telling me to go back to New York. Nobody was paying any attention either. Uh, but we've been well received and we've been to community meetings since. And I've had a lot of emails and quite a few phone calls of people who have said, thanks for coming to JC. You went to a, you had a representative of yours um, go to the Al Diners. That's right, uh, to deal with the uh, Greenville situation. Um, he identified himself as Hood Boris or Barisa. No, his nickname is Barrio. Barrio? So I think the, the Hood uh, Barrio? No, that's not his name. I, 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 that's a, he's exactly quoted as saying that by Carly in oh, the no, Jersey Journal. I understand, but uh, I think what she picked up on was his guardian angel nickname, not his real name, Mark Adams. Um, and supposedly they were sleeping at that meeting at Al's Diner. That was a pretty boring meeting. Got to tell you, you tell me, you haven't. I've gone to. I've never gone. To, I've never gone Look, to sleep at the community meeting. I was just meeting. in the John Gotti Jr. trial. When, the judge was falling asleep from when, time to time. When you're there to represent Guardian Angels and Curtis Lewa, yeah. uh, you shouldn't be sleeping at the counter. No, if Curtis, and also identifying yourself as Hood. I, I guarantee you. That's a red flag to us. If Curtis Sliwa were talking, nobody would be sleeping. These guys have got to get a little more mojo power, you, you know, know, a little more juice in their caboose. Being in the radio business and news, yeah. you must have been following the crime situation here in Jersey City. No, not really. No, you didn't hear about the homicides? No. So just a phone call from a mugging victim brought to, you on to be over? A, well, a former guardian angel. I mean, look, if, if you had, let's say, gone to school with somebody, alumni member, and then years later, they contact you, say, I got a problem. You're more likely to pay attention to their need than someone else because that was a person well, who was an part of your guy. group. Usually when people call me, they want me to pay them back their money. Hmm. You met with Healy back in July. 
you didn't express any interest in coming no. over to Jersey City. Then. No, it was not. In fact, I was there to uh, sort of introduce him as he was being presented a, uh, an award at, uh, I guess it's called the Casino. Casino in the Park, right, Lincoln Casino Park. Casino in the Park. It was a great event. We got along well. He was surprised that I knew as much about him as I did. But at that meeting, you didn't express any interest in coming here. You didn't no, talk about there was crime. No, no interest at that point. You didn't express any concerns that you had for Jersey City, thinking it's a new market, no? Remember, I'm in 60 cities around the world. I, I've got so many requests to establish groups. You have to prioritize. Yeah, i got one minute left in this segment. I want to get you a request. All right. You're recruiting for Guardian Angels now here in Jersey City. Yes. How's that going? It's going well. We've got about eight folks who are from Jersey City. Oh, so you're up two since the uh, last wave hey, you were right. We're aggressive. We're aggressive. Well, let me break for commercial. Let's bring Full Up in here, and we'll continue on on that. I know I'm breaking a little early. You're watching The Weekly Show. We'll be right back. For over 20 years, Rita and Joe's has been serving the finest Italian food at casual prices for the whole family. Make a day to enjoy the Italian cuisine. Rita and Joe's daily lunch and dinner specials. Relax at the lounge before you dine. On-site catering for all occasions. Rita and Joe's, a touch of Italy in your own backyard. 142 Broadway, Jersey City, 201-451-3606. Visit on the net at reader-joes.com. J&S Ford, 315 Clendenny Avenue and Route 440 in Jersey City, Hudson County's only Blue Oval Certified Ford dealership, 201-432-7272, home of the Expedition, the Ford Focus, the F-150, the Icon, the Ford Mustang, and the new standard in sedans, the 500. Over 600 certified pre-owned vehicles on site, J&S Ford, 315 Clendenny Avenue, Route 440 in Jersey City, sales, leasing, service, parts, and it's all Ford certified. Coming soon to Journal Square, the Square Tower Building. 130 new residential and retail rental units, 400 on-site parking spots. In the heart of Journal Square's shopping and business district, walking distance to the path, New Jersey Transit and Taxi Service, 10 minutes from downtown Jersey City and Hoboken, 15 minutes from New York City. For retail space, call DeCristo Realty, 201 653 4000. Square Tower Building, living on a higher level. If your business or organization would like to advertise here on the weekly show or on our sister show, Hudson County's Talking, on 1430 AM radio, call me at 201-963-6700. Your business or organization could be seen by thousands of people on your cable provider or heard on the AM frequency on AM 1430. 201-963-6700. We'd love to have you. Journal Square is on a roll. You need to stop by and check it out. Enjoy shopping for clothing, music, furniture, shoes, jewelry, household items. You name it, it's on Journal Square. Don't forget the food. There's plenty of food on Journal Square. Enjoy the concerts at the Fountain, a movie at the Landmark Lowe's Theater. And don't forget the savings on Journal Square. Behind every store door is savings. Journal Square, it's easy to get to and there's plenty of parking. Journal Square, we're on a roll. We're back. You're watching the weekly show. Yes, my guest is still Curtis Slewer, and you can see he's been joined by our councilman here in Jersey City from Ward East, Steve Fuller. Steve, you can chime in on this anytime you want. But let me let's get back to the Guardian Angels. Um, you got about eight recruits so far. Is there some training they go through? Oh yeah. Uh, there's really training is in four parts. You have the physical preparation, basic self-defense, right. and they have to learn the law as to how it pertains to what a citizen can do in Hudson County, Jersey City, mm -hmm. the state of New Jersey. They have to be uh, certified in CPR and first aid, and then they have to do some role-playing so that uh, you recreate situations in a closed atmosphere and teach them how to work through it. So uh, they become a help and not a hindrance. Where's the uh, Guardian Angel boot camp for this? Oh, it's all in the city for now. Uh, we don't have a training facility, although one of our former trainers, who was a Berlin guardian angel, lives right across from Varick, and as soon as she appropriates some space, she'll be doing the training there. 
Now, the group that you uh, recruited so far, the eight, what yeah. are the ages of these people? Oh, they range in age from uh, 18 uh, right on up into their 40s. Because when we spoke before, you were recruiting from the age 16. That is correct. Have you stopped that and you're no. going from 18? Oh, no. If we're, uh, we get a young uh, man or young woman, let's say from uh, Ferris or Snyder or Dickinson on the Hill or even St. Peter's, uh, we'd be more than happy to recruit them as long as they had the permission uh, of their mom or dad or guardian. 16, 17, 18, naturally, they just sign on their own. Do the guardian angels have insurance, a liability insurance? General liability insurance. Uh, anyone can uh, always end up suing you, but in 27 years, luckily, uh, after detaining hundreds of people, we have never been sued. What about angels being injured? Oh, yeah. I mean, I've had six guardian angels, unfortunately, who've been shot and killed in the line of duty. About three dozen seriously injured. As you know, I've been injured. Uh, so it can be dangerous. But yeah, well, you were injured in a allegedly retaliation from right. um, Mr. Gotti. These angels were killed in trying to apprehend a well, criminal actually, uh, or... Many of them while coming to the aid of people who were themselves at risk of being... Uh, physically injured or killed. Were any of these um, unfortunate angels uh, minors? Uh, there was one who was 16. Uh, the others were uh, in their uh, early 20s. What and did the family say about the uh, child being killed in well, the performance of his guardian angel duties? I think the family uh, obviously was upset, uh, but they never complained about what their young child was doing because uh, previous to that, the person was involved in gang activity. Uh, so they had sort of taken a different path in their life, unfortunately, and uh, coming to the aid of a victim, uh, that gentleman was killed. The parents didn't uh, bring any kind of legal action against you and your organization? Nope. Never been sued, no wrongful death cases, nothing of that type. Hmm, that's interesting. You, you would think if someone lost a child under your supervision, especially in our litigation uh, land now, you had... Um, a 16-year-old stabbed over on West 43rd Street, I believe. That is correct. What happened with that? Uh, he was actually uh, from Glenridge, New, New Jersey. New Jersey, New Jersey right. resident. Yeah. And uh, he had come in because he spent so much time in Times Square, like a lot of suburban kids do, uh, coming in there and enjoying themselves or looking for trouble. He had joined the Guardian Angels with his uh, friend. Uh, they had stopped a drug deal. He had been stabbed, critically injured, uh, was taken to uh, St. Vincent's Hospital and then recovered. Uh, he's safe and sound now. He's in good shape. Uh, no complications as a result of that. And again, no problems with the family, huh? No, no. And uh, look, whether a suburban, upscale family, as he came from, or uh, in the case of the, the other young uh, adult who passed away, poor and impoverished family, I think they understand why their sons and daughters get involved. Uh, maybe at first uh, they're a little put off. They're worried about their safety. But they fully understand, and I think in many instances they encourage their involvement because uh, in both cases these were young men who were getting into trouble. Being in the Guardian Angels was a different path for them to take. And now they're dead because they were part of the Guardian Angels. Well, one is it's dead. remarkable that the family never survived. brought any legal action. Nope. And, uh, they nothing, just thank nope. you for your effort with their sons getting them out of the gang and Well, those, those the were the streets, conversations I, I had had prior to and... Uh, and uh, post the injury and the death. Do the angels have to see a crime being committed or will they just approach somebody because they look shaky? No, uh, you use some street smarts, but generally uh, to physically apprehend someone, it helps to oh, actually see Tell me about the street problem. smarts. Let me um, get a couple of guys walking down uh, Barrick and Christopher Columbus. Right. Maybe they're bopping a little bit. Right. Do you approach them? No, no pop. <laughs> if we had to approach everyone who bops, we'd be stopping half the uh, well, city's what, young people. What would be approachable? What would be approachable? What, what appears to be a sale, distribution of drugs, or somebody steering somebody maybe to a location where they intended on buying drugs. Oftentimes, just us being there or intervening at that time, everybody will go in different directions. But if we actually see a sale, an exchange of money, we'll hold both the buyer and the seller there until the police arrive. So you basically, you try to use a probable cause then? Uh, you got to see it. You got to have some reason to think that a crime was committed. Because remember, it can backfire on you if you've grabbed the wrong person, used excessive physical force, violated someone's rights. You're going to be arrested and the group could be sued. Yeah, but you never, no legal action ever. Nope. Because in New York City, there are numerous cases where the guardian angels 
um, let's say, apprehended somebody and turned out they had no drugs or any paraphernalia on them? Well, I've been arrested 76 times. I'm the perfect example. But those were all at a time when the police were harassing us. So when you, when you dig into the Guardian Angels, um, there's a lot of red flares there. There's a lot of questions. Let's talk about patrolling. You're going to patrol. You started downtown, right? Yes. Now your group works in groups of four when they patrol? That is correct. And how big of a radius are we working in downtown? Well, you start with a four square block area. You patrol there. You're consistent. And then if you're having success, if you're asked to expand the patrols, then that's what you do. But that only comes with recruiting more people, training more people. Steve, have you seen any of these patrols so far? You see them. You see them. And they are very present. In fair, fairness, they're very present at all the community groups, all of them. Well, first off, are you in favor of the Angels being here in Jersey City? I have mixed feelings. When they first came here, okay, we'll take it it's from two standpoints. Number one is... You need to look at it from my standpoint. We spend the largest portion of our budget on the police department. At right? least one third of our budget is police. There's the no other, question another about third it, right? is fire. And what we're doing is we have a lot of special units all of a sudden. We have uh, a significant no, uh, movement of police officers moving into the ABC, into Megan's Law. So at some point, you know, you feel like we have the manpower. It's a, uh, it's a brass issue. So I came out with this whole Chief Troy thing. Um, my initial inclination was to welcome them in would be almost acknowledging the, the fact that the police department is incapable of it. And at the same time, I was very skeptical as far as how long he's going to stay here. Some of the stuff that you touched on. I will tell you that in the last couple of weeks, you see them at, you, you, they are out there. Um, they but they're in the community the meetings. Four block radius well, there. I, I will tell you that people do feel better, <coughs> you know, and you know, I've asked Curtis, at the, I did go to that press conference I saw you at, I asked Curtis, uh, you know, I, I voiced, we, we spoke on the side and I s explained to him the fact that I'm skeptical as far as what his intentions are, as, as far as if he's going to make a commitment and stay, and I feel like if he does make a commitment, that's a good thing for Jersey City because all the help that we can have is, uh, is a beneficial thing. I said, if he's not going to stay, then I don't think it's good for anybody. And he said uh, that he, he does plan on staying. There's no question about it. And if that's the case, I mean, they're going to be a part of the community. It can't hurt, you know? You don't feel that you possibly may have planted the seeds, again, conspiracy here, by calling for Chief Troy's resignation, causing a little bit of chaos yeah. on the media front concerning the police, and lo and behold... I think in hindsight... An angel flies okay. over. In, in hindsight, the... the to take advantage of possibly a situation... Maybe. In hindsight, the rationale... The rationale He's not going to admit it. No, I'm going to tell you, in, in hindsight, the rationale for asking for Chief's Troy resignation was certainly warranted. He had a big increase in crime, mismanagement in the police department. There's no question about it. Maybe a little heavy-handed. Nevertheless, I think that in the last three weeks, the crime issue has come front and center. It's difficult to argue that point, right? He's sitting next to me. He's, as a well, I, you know? I think he's so, here for, his, for well, opportunity. Well, whatever the end result is... We've seen some movement over there. You've noticed the fact that in the, in the Jersey Journal that there has been some changes within the last three weeks. Now, you could point to a lot of different reasons. You're going to say maybe it's uh, the fact that I called for Chief Choi's resignation and he's redeployed. Maybe it's the fact that they're here. Maybe the fact that people are more aware. Who knows? It but the bottom be, line is just solve the problem. Troy was just hey, doing these that, things and they just happened to be coming to fruition now. No. I, come that, on. Come on. Well, let's I don't believe in coincidences like that. You know, Curtis... You're basically saying you're going to go downtown, eventually you're going to expand from the four blocks. You're going up to Journal Square. You're already here with two guys. You're going up to MLK Drive. You're going to Monticello Avenue. You're going to hit the Heights. And you're going up to Ocean Avenue. What size of an angel force are you going to need to accomplish? You'll need more people than we have cops. Oh, no, not that many, because remember, cops you have... You work, you tour in groups of four. Right. It, but you're going to basically now cover us. Yeah, but remember, police have a responsibility to your city and every neighborhood, every square inch. They have to respond to every call, major or minor, and they have to be there 24 hours a day. We don't. We can sort of focus on key areas. I think the next area that we would focus on if we're a success in the downtown would be, be Greenville because the city councilwoman there uh, has, in essence, uh, said, hey, we could use your help. It's one of the reasons we were at Al's Diner was to s see and learn more about uh, what people had to say about their problems. What size uh, angel force are you looking to have here in Jersey City eventually no, in hopes? I would say probably uh, 40 men, 40 women, you know, that number. 40 Not men much. now, you patrol 12 to 12 groups of four. Right. Uh, you sure 40 is going to be enough for downtown Journal Square, well, MLK, takes, remember, Monticello, the Heights? It takes three months, three months to train. So if everything goes well, 
within a period of a year, I think we could have 40 trained guardian angels patrolling, a minimum of eight hours a week per person. So you start adding that up, it's a lot of patrol time each week. Doesn't what's compare to, to say what um, to. you don't go back to Brooklyn like you did back in the 80s? Well, why should I go back to Brooklyn? I'm not patrolling Why did you, why did you go back the first time? Yeah, but remember, I'm not here. It's local people, Jersey City residents, and there is a base of support. Uh, the last time we started in Jersey City, there was no support whatsoever. I don't just, see the support now. But let's well, on that. On that, I got to break for commercial. Okay. You must on that, we'll be right back. On your eyes. Let me break. <laughs> let me break for commercial. You're watching the weekly show. Starting to get interesting, isn't it? We'll be right back. Burns Brothers Monuments, 787 Tunley Avenue in Jersey City. Affordable monuments installed at all cemeteries. Custom work done on premises, serving all fates. Cemetery lettering, bronze plaques, and special orders welcomed. Burns Brothers Monuments and Memorials, Tunley Avenue between County Avenue and Seacorkers Road. 201-795-0800. Burns Brothers, craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Chevrolet, the DeFeo way. The right car, the right price, and right in your neighborhood. DeFeo Chevrolet, 905 Communipore Avenue, Jersey City, 201-433-9500. All models, new and previously owned, on-site Chevrolet service and parts. DeFeo Chevrolet, 905 Communipore Avenue, also known as Sam C. DeFeo Drive, Jersey City, 201-433-9500. Chevrolet, the DeFeo way. Plaza Auto Body, 700 Tunley Avenue in Jersey City. Your local collision specialist. Body and fender repair. On-site oven-baked paintwork. Fiberglass repair experts. Custom and classic car restoration. All insurance is welcome. 24-hour towing available. Licensed by the state of New Jersey. Plaza Auto Body, 700 Tunley Avenue, 201-222-3050. Plaza Auto Body, your bumper-to-bumper -bumper buddy. Hi, I'm Pat O'Melia with The Weekly Show. If your business or organization would like to advertise here on The Weekly Show or on our sister show, Hudson County's Talking, on 1430 AM radio, call me at 201-963-6700. Your business or organization could be seen by thousands of people on your cable provider or heard on the AM frequency on AM 1430. 201-963-6700. We'd love to have you. Hudson County Hyundai Headquarters. All makes and models, on site, in stock, and ready for immediate delivery. Hudson Hyundai. It's new, it's pre-owned, it's savings, it's service, and it's convenient. Right here in Jersey City on Route 440. Hudson Hyundai at the Hudson Mall in Jersey City. 877 Hudson 1. We're back. You're watching the weekly show. Curtis Sleeworth, Councilman Steve Fuller, and support. I don't see it. Where are you getting the support from? You must have window shades on your eyes. No, no. Let's see. Jersey journalists ears. said they received about 60 calls okay. uh, concerning the Guardian Angels. Right. This is a city of over 240,000 right. people. You had two press conferences where nobody showed. Not a not a thing. You know, where do you see this? I, I, where, I, I, where's I, I, the I opposition? Say, go ahead. Don't where's that. the opposition? Uh, I'm going to tell you that. <laughs> From my experience at the community groups, I'm, I was surprised, okay, because they, there, is a, there, there is a sentiment as far as appreciation goes. And I don't know if that's attributed to uh, a lack of appreciation towards the police department or it's that people are really happy, but people are certainly intrigued, okay, and there's very curious. And uh, it seems like people are more supportive than not. And I'm a guy who goes out there saying that, the, that they shouldn't be here, and I'm still kind of undecided as far as how long they're going to be here. But the I don't think he's going to be here long at all. At the community groups, you would be surprised. In fairness, you'd be surprised. You're talking about a community that gets excited over dog walks. It's true. They do most get excited. Of your, most of your constituents are transplanted New Yorkers who think this is a little bit of home coming over here. But in your angel history, this is probably the largest scale undertaking you've tried. 
from what I've researched, nothing right. along this scale. Where Where's you're it? coming in, we have you're going to patrol the streets of Jersey City or off the train. I don't know what, what you think Jersey City is, but we're in 60 cities around the world, from Cape Town to Tokyo to Manila. You're not comparing Jersey City in size to those cities, are you? Jersey City, pretty good size city. Wait, the those, those cities in, uh, have largest in 10 the million people. Come on now. We operate in New York City. We operate in Chicago. What we in operate Toronto in Houston. With the Guardian we Angels? operate where they're training in Toronto. These are huge yeah, cities. You can't compare Jersey City to the, the scope. Well, from what I from, can I, can from I the scope you, that I, you're talking about patrolling, yeah, I can because I don't see that in any other area. Hey, we're in the little borough of Sussex, New Jersey. And that's Western your only New spot in New Jersey. Uh, and I believe there's no police department there. Isn't exactly. It? But, but, I mean, we're here it's 27 years. How much longer do we have to be here before we get credibility? And our number one fan... A lot fan, of us didn't even know you were still in the action. We uh, figured you got in the radio. That was it for the Angels. Our number one fan, Rudy Giuliani. No one is more synonymous with public safety and law and order. In fact, your city would probably pay him to come over and act as a consultant. And we're doing this on the cuff. No charge to the That taxpayers. was the next question. Right, Councilman? How are you going to fund this? I up for any money? Nothing. No. <laughs> hey, I got yeah, a question. You I don't do fundraise? A... Is that what you're saying? The Guardian Angels don't do fundraising? Yeah, private. Well, we don't ask for city money. And we're not no, asking No, no, we're not saying county. city money. I mean fundraising. Private donation. Yeah, if people want to donate money so people can buy berets and jackets and have radios, uh, I mean, look, we get a better bang for the dollar that's donated to us than sometimes officials. I mean, you're talking Hudson County here, guy. Maybe the yeah, most my corrupt, county. Remember, you're from the Brooklyn, most, pal. <laughs> the most corrupt county in America politically. Remember the previous county executive? What happened to him? He's in the witness protection program. We have some history here, but so does yeah, New York. Yeah, that's, of course, thing, that's hey. another thing we don't particularly appreciate here in Jersey City. Somebody from over New York coming over here telling I gotta give you the rats. I gotta are. give you the rats. But uh, New York is far from uh, Shangri-La over there. What were you about to say, Steve? No, I was just gonna ask if they don't get their 80 people, what's the end result? Do you guys no, what, what, what his goal here, 80 okay. ain't gonna do it. <laughs> at what number? This is this is a good question actually. What, what number would it. you say? Is it, okay, we're not going to get the recruitment well, and we can't continue to get the people well, to come from New York? the downtown area, 8 to 12 trained people. I, I feel confident that's a solid unit. Then Greenville, you'll need more because right. it has more intense problems. And if we're then able to move to a journal square or the Heights, okay. you know, similar. Well, you're already on journal square. Yeah, but, I mean, not yet that, to the point where we're focusing a lot. But of your, your guys were standing pretty much right in front of the Jersey Journal. They did everything but wave to get some attention there. Uh, to me, this looks all like a PR gimmick. You and know, he's going to be here for about a month, have a little fun, then... Well, uh, why, why, well what's the there. point? I mean, you act as if Jersey City is the epicenter of all attention in the nation. I'm in New York City. Uh, you, you, you sneeze in New York City, you get attention. Why would I have to come well, to Jersey City to get we attention? We didn't call you to come over here. You, you didn't. You say somebody You didn't. Did. But I noticed I, I, when I, you were at the Dixie Deli... Did you see the owners and operators of the Dixie Deli say, you know, we didn't ask you to come here. Well, that's the safest place in Jersey City. you got four angels standing Listen, outside of Dixie Deli. I understand Deli. that, but that's because they invited us here. So well, that, that's, why be grudged I'm not now? sure I completely agree with you, because after speaking to Mario when he says, I'm surprised he even remembered me, uh, I believe somebody else reached out for you to bring you here. I believe you know, this is just you are, you are. I'm cynical. You are I'm not, from radio like you are. You are not an we optimist. Believe you believe the glass is totally empty, never mind half empty. No, I, I, I believe there's a motive behind you. You know, that's because you live in Hudson County, where many of, not, I'm exempting you, but many I of your elected that. officials. Why is he exempt? Many of your elected officials are in office to wind dine pocket line because they have a hidden agenda. You had a governor, Governor McGreedy, right? I mean, come on, I understand. You're from the state of New Jersey. It's soprano land. I, too, would be very jaded and skeptical. And McGreevy was born in Jersey City. But as soon as he learned how to walk, he went to Woodbridge. I understand that. So I understand your skepticism. I understand it from the history of this location. But trust me, well, just, just observe. There's a lot to be skeptic of with the Guardian Angels. All right. But I realize you're here to promote as long them. As it's but not, if you look at the history... As long as it's not it's costing not you any tax dollars... And we're not adding to the crime figures. And we're not the hell's angels. I'm not angels. sure you're not going to add to the crime figures. Yeah, but we haven't. There's no complaints from the police that we've interfered with anything they've we've done on committee. We've only been here a week, and you got a whopping... How many guys are here in Jersey City from the Angels? You have eight. Eight. Right. Yeah, that's not making a hell of a lot of interference you know, with the Jersey you know, City police. Is anybody I'm complaining? amazed you've gotten much media. I, I'm, look, I'm, 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 do I, I force people here? to come here? Do I force... You asked me to come <laughs> I asked here, you to right? Come on. 
I mean, I you ask, you, I come. Like I said, when they open the show, I commend you for being here. If the Jersey Journal didn't want to show up at a press conference, they have other events to cover. They decided to cover our press conference. Did I put a gun to their head? No. It's a good story for them. Well, let's get back to the support and the embracing. Yeah. I don't see this. You're saying you, you have all the support, but tell me where it is. You know, it's I, not the residents, because I didn't I see them at the streets. press conferences. Nobody's flipping me the bird. Nobody's telling me to go back to New York. Nobody's pulling out Nobody's a gun. Nobody's doing a drive-by army. You know, you just, you don't see these things, because you don't want to. Like I said, you have window shades no, on I, your I, eyes. I watched everything you The did. councilman has told you. I haven't been to any of these community meetings. Have I yeah, been to any no, of them? you haven't. You haven't. Right. And these people have been Wood supportive been of the regular, <laughs> average, everyday guardian angels. you got to go to these community meetings. I Believe me. You've been I've doing attended. too many of these shows. I've You're too much attended. of a trendoid in Jersey I've been, City. I've attended a lot of community meetings. And uh, for that matter, my office in the Heights is open. It's sort of a constituent's office. Now, one person has come in and said, damn, when are we going to get the garden? You offering us space there in the Heights? You no, mean no, we can no, offer? Hey, wait, hey, this might be good. You offer us where, space? Where is your base of operations in Jersey City? That's right at the Dixie Belly. I mean, that's where you're conducting business. Yeah, well, what's wrong with that? We're not, we're not asking any money. Trust me, we don't want the city but to lease us any space. You, you acknowledge that you will be looking for funding. If donation. people want to help us, we're going to tell them no. They want to play the stupid well, you're not Powerball, gonna, you know, Lotto, a dollar. waste you're the money have to do paying some for the Garden State Parkway, go to Atlantic City. If they want to throw a few shekels our way to buy us berets and jackets and radios, you object to that? We're a 501c3 nonprofit tax-exempt organization. That's interesting also. Well, that means we're legit. Nah, there's a lot of shaky 501c's. Um... Going back to your insurance question, who insures the Guardian Angels? It's a general insurance provider. They what? insure our board of directors and they insure us with a general liability policy. Could you, you know, um, supply us with the name of the insurance Send company? you all that information. We're a public yeah, organization registered with every attorney general that in every state we do business. Although you're a ten attorney general. <laughs> Got to, again, question here. Somebody who has uh, refused to pay... Uh, a driving violation, show up in court, and you make her your attorney general in New Jersey? Well, if you're talking about tickets here, none of us pay our tickets. Well, They're just, just part I'm of just, yeah, just part I, of Hudson I'm, County. I'm just a New Yorker. Except for Lou Manzo with a perfect driving I'm record. I'm just asking some questions here, how your attorney general could end up being a scofflaw. See, but this is what we don't like. This guy comes over from Brooklyn and starts knocking Hudson I County speak and Jersey City. I and speak the truth. I speak the truth. And you saying, yeah, this, I think my, my constituents. I'm telling you, I'm just telling you the facts. Pat, don't, I mean, I'm telling you, he goes to the community meetings, those guys go to the community meetings, and they don't mind it. I'm just telling you, what do you want me to lie to you? What, what meetings has he attended? He didn't make the Owl's Diner one, he sent hoodie. They, they, they were at, he, he hasn't Hood. been at any, he hasn't been at any, they, we, I saw them at the Van Voorst Park Association meeting, I saw them at the Neighborhood Watch Association meeting, both in the last week. So. Now, most of those meetings are always looking for somebody to be a speaker, so you're just convenient. They didn't get a chance to speak, actually. Well, actually, were they awake? They weren't awake at the Owl's Dino. I, I wasn't Like I said, if you could get some exciting speakers in City Hall, you know, represent... Well, what was community. exciting about these other community meetings? I'm just saying. You asked about Owl's Diner. I, I would just say, you know, get your elected officials to be a little more, you know, pumped up. Gas yes, one of my elected up. officials yeah, right he here. Wasn't there. Sometimes I think he's the only council person we have. Hey, he's, he's, he's the only one that makes noise over right there. Now right that, or wrong, he's making noise. Right now that he's taking a medze medze approach towards the guardian angels, i got to butter him up. Well, I'll be honest with you, Curtis. Yeah. I don't care if you guys are walking around in the streets and mm -hmm. you're in the red outfits. Fine, it's another set of eyes. But it's not going to work unless you can cooperate with the police and you can work together. Well, how, why now, is why it? would you want to be in a place where you're not wanted? Well, I would never ever started the Guardian Angels because, as you know, the police were very adversarial to us in New York in the late 70s, and now they're very supportive. That will change in time. I cannot believe that your police chief is going to remain adversarial. There's just too many reasons for him to, to, to develop some kind of a cooperative way to work with us. Now, you're saying the New York City police just love having the Guardian Angels around? Talk to police I'll be honest, when I'm in New York City, yes. I haven't seen a Guardian, outside of you popping oh. up, I, can just <laughs> I haven't see, seen a minute. Guardian Angel I since, like, see you. 80s. I can see you in Brownsville, Brooklyn, right, taking the number two train well, to Beast. New York City. Uh, yeah, yeah, wait, you go to, your idea of New York Broadway? City is Manhattan. I broadcast out of 96th New York City. 96th Street, south to the Battery. I'm talking outer boroughs. I'm talking Brooklyn, the Bronx, parts of Queens.
You're talking Manhattan. You're like I'm a tourist Soho. from, from yeah. Iowa and Nebraska. You think, oh, yeah, New York City, it's great. Uh, yeah. Here, Central Park but, here, the Empire State Building. Well, it seems like you guys seem to be hiding. Why aren't you? Well, I'll tell why, you what. I don't see you there. I'll tell you what. I remember when I went to the Madison Square Garden for the boxing. Manhattan. Again, used to be on the train. Now you're not on the what train anymore. What about Brooklyn? Where the hell are you? What, that's the real part of the city. You're How not many angels do you have? 150. 150 that angels. That is correct. In the New York City area. That is correct. Patrolling angels. And then we're in the public housing projects where we train the hard-to-handle children. We're in the school system. We're in the wise. We train teachers at St. John's University and Iona College, although that's in Westchester. It's one of a lot of places. We're down in little bucolic, blue-collar, working-class Keyport, New Jersey, training New Jersey youth to stay away from gangs, drugs, and violence. As we are taping this show, this yes. is the end of February. Yes. I'll say in six months, you're not here. Jeez. Yeah, I'm tw doing this 27 years. Why? Not, well, you might do it Why? Why? There. Why is Jersey City going to be so difficult for us to operate in? We're operating in third world countries. Third world countries. I would say that that sentiment's the general sentiment, though. That's the concern. That's the, you, you just said he's exactly what's the motive. Broken. He'll never admit it, and he's very well rehearsed. He's here with a motive. Somebody asked him to get involved. I'm going to speculate and say it was Brett Schindler. I'm going to say there was a political motive behind this. It wasn't the deli op operator. Now, again, very well, well The deli operator is wearing the red beret, the red jacket. His wife is wearing the red beret, the red jacket. I forced them to put well, that actually, on. Actually, if they were wearing that, maybe they wouldn't have got mugged. I forced I'm them just saying, to that put was that convenient on. Situation yeah, way, to take if, advantage if, of. If, if it's unfortunate is, what happened. That? Don't get me wrong. If that is so horrible, let's say your skepticism. Brett Chandler was a great mayor for your city. One of the few who wasn't whining, you're, dining, you're and pocket lining. You're entitled to your opinion. I have said that. that, but you like the, the old Tammany. These you guys must had like the old Tammany Hall system. You had a mayor in this town who was an illegal alien. Well, again, an illegal but he's alien. A great guy. I mean, he come did. on, man. Your mayor was an illegal alien. Well, now we have a mayor right now, former prosecutor, former judge. He was elected on uh, Law and Order. I introduced him. I was asked by a community organization, Casino in the Park, to introduce him. Did he not take my introduction? He shook my hand. He said, Curtis, you're such a fine individual. As long as you stay in New York City. Did he say that then? No. He said, you're a fine individual. The Jersey City crowd, they were clapping and applauding like, like seals. seals huh? right. Oh, yeah, right. So now all of a sudden, I'm patrolling here. I'm persona non grata. How could I be such a good person when I was giving him an award, introducing him, and now be such a oh, persona non grata that I happen to be in his city? Well, that, you came in as the celebrity guest for that. Oh, well, so what you're fee? saying is... Will no, you pay no a fee? fee? No, okay. of course. It's a community organization. Oh, but good. Don't be, don't, don't be looking for a fee here. No, absolutely not. But let me anybody. ask you this. <laughs> so basically, you're telling me that the mayor was doing the typical political mumbo-jumbo, which is, hey, have a cup of coffee and please take the pass back to New York City. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. So that's the way he operates with all people, right? Well, they, you came over, you shook his hand, you, you, you are I a introduced him. They asked me, you introduced the mayor. I said nice things about your mayor. His wife said, oh, you know so much about my husband. It's absolutely amazing. Well, somebody clued you in. Clued me in. I follow the politics. I'm a talk radio show Wait a host. minute. You just told me you weren't aware of the crime situation here in Jersey City. I didn't now even, you, you know, you I didn't even mention the pictures on the website of the mayor there with the can of beer. I'm, I'm not getting Half involved. naked. I mean, I didn't, I didn't even talk about that. I had window shades on my eyes. I was trying to be a nice guy. Let's, we're out of show here. <laughs> let's see if uh, Mr. Slee was hanging around here in six months and let's see the results of it. I'll invite him back in six months. You're watching The Weekly Show. On behalf of Curtis Sliwa, Steve Fulop, I'm Pat Amelia. I'll talk to you Monday on a real radio show. Good night.